There are other parts of the world that experience maybe 40 degrees. So do we have to worry? We do. Because of our location where we're surrounded by sea, we also get higher humidity. When temperature and humidity get high enough, our bodies struggle to cope. It can actually be quite lethal for us. Lethal? Yes. Okay. Still okay? So we are pumping more moisture into already. You can see it on my t-shirt. Uh, definitely feels... It's almost, it's almost like there's a weight. Do a few more star jumps again. <sighs> Even my breathing... I feel like it's, it's harder better. to breathe, yeah. <sighs> I do feel a bit more exhausted faster than just now. If this is what Singapore's weather is going to be like in future, the main avenue of heat loss is to evaporate the sweat that is on your skin. The key thing is that the, the, the sweat needs to evaporate, right? That's how you release heat. Exactly. If not, the, the sweat will simply drip off and no heat will be lost in that uh, whole okay. process. In the 1950s, my grandfather lived in a house something like this. I heard that they could get so cold at night, he had to sleep with a thick blanket. By the 70s, my mom lived in a high-rise building in a neighbourhood like this. Pretty soon, there were 5, 10, and then 23 of these HDB towns. We're at about 24.8 degrees C right now. 24.8? Yes. Well, that sounds yeah. like heaven to me. I've never heard of that. Absolutely. I've in Singapore yeah. before. Yeah. Large parts, at least, of Singapore in the 1950s were probably similar to this Ooh. and uh, much less built up. The temperature right now is 29.1 degrees C. That's not a small difference. Even though the two locations are only 30 minutes apart by car, we tracked a jump of 4 degrees Celsius. As you can see here, they are stacked on top of each other. Yeah. And so the bottom one is ejecting heat to the outside. But this heat is then sucked in by the next one, uh -huh. and the next one, and the next one. And the higher you go, the higher the temperature. If anybody would use them on every floor, mm -hmm. the people on top would have to spend much more for the air conditioning than the ones at the bottom. And if you would visualize the hot air that is coming out of all these air conditioners, it would be like a lighter with a little flame coming out. There are also uh, unprotected uh, forested areas which can potentially be built over with HEBs, with condos. Uh, however, it would actually be quite important to leave some of them untouched as pockets of cool areas. But what if we try to add as many trees and we have like roof gardens or even gardens growing on the walls? The research has not really shown that these screening initiatives have a beneficial effect in terms of reducing the actual urban heat and effect. And what can I as an individual do? Every individual in Singapore controls about 30%, one third of all the energy that is uh, consumed or produced in, in Singapore. You can change the mode of transportation that you have. The MRT system, for example, is all running on electricity and it's very, very efficient compared to combustion engines in cars. So if you allow the air conditioning to be one degree higher, for example, that makes a difference of up to 5% in the air conditioning costs. 